everyone. Welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantelle. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you like what you see. If you do, hit that subscribe button and also the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. Before we get into today's video, I just want to point something out. I have merch. I'm so excited. Love and Life's Journey merch. So right below this video, you'll find my merch shelf and it has my Love and Life's Journey logo on various items as well as some other uh, designs that I've created. So be sure to check that out. In today's video, I am participating in the May Look for Less Challenge. This is hosted by Yami at the Latina Next Door and every month she chooses a co-host. This month, the co-host is Casey from Coffee with My Sunshine, and I will post both of their links in the description box below, as well as the playlist for the Look for Less Challenge, so you can check out all of the videos of those who are participating. In the Look for Less Challenge, you choose a high-end home decor item, either from a, a store, something you've seen in a store, or online, and um, recreate it for less. And so I'm really excited to show you what I have come up with for this month. So let's just get started. My inspiration for this Look for Less challenge was this reclaimed wood framed mirror from Pier One. Look at the price, $379.99. That's crazy. It's 40 by 40 inches and uh, I can totally make this for way less. Uh, I'm going to make mine slightly smaller. Actually, I'm going to cut it in half. So mine's going to be about 20 by 20. But um, this is my inspiration and I'm going to make this look for less. To make the 20 by 20 size, I'm going to be using eight boxes of these Tumbling Tower games from Dollar Tree. I will also be using this mirror from Dollar Tree. When I purchased it, it was a black frame, but I had painted it for another project and ended up not using it. Uh, this mirror is probably about 10 inches in diameter. I also picked up this picture hanging kit from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using some brown and black shoe polish. You could use some stain for this, uh, just whatever color uh, you want to have for your blocks. And then I will also be using uh, Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and also in the color agave. You'll need some wood glue and uh, I'll be using a foam brush to paint my blocks. And then I'll also be using my hot glue gun with Gorilla Glue, or you could use wood glue sticks for this. Um, and I didn't show it, but I'll also be using a cutting board, a straight edge, and a razor knife. So I'm going to start by painting my blocks. And all I'm going to do is paint one of the narrow, long edges on each block. And you do not have to paint these one by one. You can take them and uh, stack them together like this and uh, paint them all at once. So I'm going to paint two boxes of the Tumbling Tower blocks in each color. So first I'm going to do two boxes in the brown shoe polish. Then I'm going to do two more boxes in the brown shoe polish but those two boxes I'm going to go back over with the black shoe polish and I'm going to wipe off the excess and you want to work kind of quickly with this because if the black shoe polish dries too much uh, then they look more black than the deep dark brown that I'm going for. And right after you put that black shoe polish on just take a paper towel and wipe off the excess. This gives these blocks a deep dark brown that's very complementary to the lighter brown blocks that I did previously. Next I'm going to take my foam brush and I'm going to paint 
two more boxes of the blocks with the ivory chalk paint and I got my foam brush a little bit wet and then uh, painted it so that the paint was a little bit transparent because I wanted the wood grain to show through a little bit. Then I'm going to take the last two boxes of blocks and I'm going to paint them with the agave colored chalk paint and same thing I'm going to uh, have the foam brush be a little bit damp uh, so that the paint's a little bit transparent and you can see the wood grain through the paint. Since I don't show all of them here, just to clarify, you will be using a total of 72 blocks in each color. That's a total of 288 blocks. For this next step, you'll want to have some type of straight edge. I'm using this old carpenter square. Uh, you can use a yardstick or um, some, just anything, some type of long straight edge so that you can line your blocks up and you'll be using for each row two blocks of each color and then just line them up um, a random order and then we're going to glue them together and I found the easiest way to glue these was to use either Gorilla Glue or wood glue sticks in my hot glue gun and then I'm just going to lay them on their side add a little bit of hot glue and make sure that they are pushed up against that straight edge so that you have nice straight rows. And then you just repeat this with all of the blocks until you have all of them glued into rows. This is a little bit time consuming, but for the amount of money that I saved doing this project, it was totally worth it. I just put on a movie and uh, watched that while I did this. Once I had all of my rows glued together, then I lined them up and the inspiration piece just was a square and I wanted to make this a little more interesting. So I decided to have my rows just all at different lengths. I don't know how to explain that, but as you can see here, they are not flush on the top and the bottom and I like the way that looks. So then I'm going to take my wood glue and add that down the edge of the first row and then I'm going to put just a little dab of hot glue in a couple of places just to hold it together and you'll want to work quickly when you after you put that hot glue on so that you don't get any um, big gaps or anything from the hot glue drying. Then I just continued to glue my rows together and I found once I got about a third of the way across, I just set that section aside and started a new section and it was just easier to work with. So I ended up with three sections and then I will glue those three sections together to make the, the complete piece. After I had my three sections glued together, I just took a paper towel, wiped away any drips that I saw of the glue, and then I took a couple of large clamps and uh, attached those so that uh, it would be secure and uh, hold it together tightly while that wood glue is drying. I also decided to add some heavy objects to this, and then I just let that wood glue dry completely. I decided I wanted to put some sort of backing on this, so I am using one of these signs from Dollar Tree. They have these beach ones now, but I'm using an Easter one that I had left over, and I'm just going to remove the string and also the burlap bow off of it, and then I will be gluing it onto the back of my wood block piece. Um, I did notice it's just a little bit too long. If I had one more row of blocks, it would have been perfect. But 
Uh, since I didn't, I am just going to cut off about a quarter of an inch uh, of the end of this sign. And this is easily done with a razor knife and a straight edge. You just have to go over it a couple of times and then uh, bend it back a little bit and then you'll be able to cut right through it. Then I'm going to take the board and I'll just remove the sticker. And by the way, this little tool for my Cricut is awesome for removing stickers off of stuff. But I'm going to take the sign and I'm going to just put a bunch of wood glue on this and uh, then I'll add a little bit of hot glue as well and uh, just put this on the back and weight it down until that wood glue is dry also. When you glue this down, just make sure that you um, put it low enough that it's not sticking up above your lowest row of blocks. Next, I'm going to take the wire and a couple of the eye screws out of the picture hanging kit that I got at Dollar Tree. Next, I'm going to line up my ruler along the top of that board and draw a line just to make a mark of where I want to put those little eye screws in. And I don't really need to measure, I just need to make sure it's the same on both sides. Then I'm going to line up the ruler on the edges and do the same thing, make a mark um, so it's the same distance from each side. The little screws are easy to screw in once you get them started, but they're a little tough to get started. So I used a drill bit and drilled just a teeny, teeny, tiny little bit into the wood just so that I could get those started. And if you don't have a drill, you could maybe tap a nail in real gently. Uh, I wouldn't think you'd want to bang on this. Um, it might break your glue apart on all of your little blocks. Um, but once you have that screw started, it goes in really easily. Then I'm just going to take that picture hanging wire and tie it uh, to one of the screws and uh, stretch it across and tie it to the other screw. And once again, I'm making sure that it's not too long so that it won't show up above the top of my blocks. So the last step is to glue on the mirror that I painted with the ivory chalk paint and I'm just centering it on the wood blocks. There's five rows of blocks about on each side of the mirror and then I just kind of eyeballed it uh, up and down and I added my hot glue first and then I realized I meant to put some E6000 on this before I put the hot glue on so I did it a little bit backwards. But anyway, put some sort of um, stronger glue on and then add a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place while the stronger glue dries. And that's all there is to it. So once again, here is the inspiration piece from Pier 1, $380 for this 40 inch mirror. And my version is just 20 inches, but I only spent $20 to make this. That included the paint and everything. I hope you liked this Look for Less Challenge project. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Don't forget to check out Yami and Casey's channels. Their links are in the description box below, as well as the playlist link for all the other Look for Less Challenge videos. Thank you so much for watching and have a blessed day.